Bruce Posner, and I got my buddy, my partner, Mr. Wayne Viner here, talk some uh, Maryland football as they try and bounce back from a tough loss to Ohio State here on Science and Kirk presents the Sports Maven. Uh, Wayne, give me your take on the game last Saturday. And uh, it was a game that in the first half, it looked like the Terps really had a shot to win, correct? Well, you get to the third quarter, Maryland has the lead, 17 to 10. It really takes into the fourth quarter before Ohio State really figures out and was more offensively than anything else. And Ryan Day is a great play caller. And they got to the point where they were picking on Corey Coley. And then when Maryland tried to help him, they threw where Maryland was not and just started marching down the field and give their quarterback a career day. Now, he hasn't started that much. But, hey, Maryland was in it. It was a game for three quarters. So you say for 45 minutes, Maryland stood toe-to-toe with the number four team in the country. Well, it's 20-17 to going into the fourth quarter. That's what Loxley always says. I want to be in the game in the fourth quarter. They were. But, look, uh, Ohio State scored the last five times. And uh, what happened at the end of the first half, you and me were screaming at each other on the phone while it happened. And uh, your take on it. I mean, you know, Loxley at the press conference, I sent it to you. I don't know if you've looked at it yet, but I've sent it to you. And – he was infuriated over it with uh, he was infuriated over Talia's response of not knowing the situation. It's exactly what you said. My own take was why put yourself in that situation when you know something could go wrong? Why not just kick the darn field goal? Well, why well, play the game at all at that point? You're you're down there. If he throws the ball in the right spot, you get a touchdown out of it. And they needed the points. Clearly, when you lose 37-17, you needed more points. You figure you've got your star, guy who's thrown for 9,000 yards. You can trust him with the ball to put it in the right spot. If you throw an inter- incomplete pass, you just go ahead and kick the field goal. And he pulled a Kirk Cousins, as I said on the postgame show, where he managed to let the clock run out without getting the field goal off. He threw it to the wrong spot. Well, Loxley put it like this. Say your court, my quarterback has to know that that's not a time for a check down. Mm-hmm. He said it's that simple, it's that clear, it's just not the time for a check down. And he checked it down overall, though. He was great. I mean, his pass so, to before um, you move on, it's sort of funny that Littleton caught the ball because out of all the players out there, that's the guy who really you wonder if he can catch the ball. Oh. Would have been a great time to drop that pass, but that is not what happened there. Well, they're not ready to win this game yet, Wayne. It's that simple. Nope. They're just not ready. And look, we want them to with all our heart. We've sat through so many losses against these good teams, and the only time we've I've, we've beaten Penn State a couple times, but one year they were down, and we had Stefan Diggs who was fired up and refused to shake the hand. If you remember. And then oh, the yeah, other I was time, there. The other time, I do believe it was a COVID game. So it was. that's not, and every other time they've lost, and one time they lost 63 to nothing at home before one of the biggest, best crowds I've ever seen. And uh, yep. which hopefully it'll be the same this year, but uh, you just can't get over that hump. But I want to tell you one thing, and I did get a chance to talk to uh, the coach about it. I just, you know, I had my mind on other things. And we don't have to go into the tragedy. It's it's totally uh, encompassed our whole system. But I had forgotten to raise my hand. Finally, I did. This Ryan Day is a real, I don't know right, what the right word is. He's just a jerk. Okay? Or an idiot. That's a nice way to put it. But he's he didn't a have play call. He him to say one nice thing about Maryland. And you know what happened? Because he didn't, I really believe. Maryland dropped to the bottom of that trying to get into the top 25. You go from 26. 26 before the game, and now they fell back to 35. And I got to tell you something. It really frosted me. I was really mad that he is such an idiot. Don't these guys understand that the promotion of the Big Ten is everything with the competition with the SEC? 
Don't they get it, Wayne? Well, they get it in basketball. I think it's the most complimentary league in basketball. in basketball. But if you look at the coaches at the top of that, and you look at Painter as a basketball coach and as a guy, you go, that that's actually a nice guy. He's a pretty good basketball coach. That's a nice as guy. As much as I don't like him, Izzo's the same way. He'll always say, this was a tough game. I don't know how we won it. The other team played. A, he always does it, even if it's not true. They're it, always promoting each other. And that's why what happens, the Big Ten gets 11 teams or 10 teams into the dance. All right. right. So it happens I every Ryan, year. Ryan Day should have called Turgeon and barred one. They were terrific. And that's all you would have needed. And Maryland could have been ranked after losing the game. They, they certainly put a scare in Ohio State. I've talked to many Ohio State fans who at first said, oh, Ohio State was terrible. But as the game went on, their mind changed a little bit. So Maryland's pretty good. Yeah, and, Ryan and Day, this, the is what fell off the bus. this is what he said. He said, we came out and really played bad. What? Liam, march through your team like you weren't there. All right? Like you weren't even there. You made an idiotic play. Going for a, a fake, non-fake punt, you know, they yeah. look amateurish. They're not beating Michigan. They're not in Michigan's class, all right? Well, they got to play that game, so we'll see what happens. But overall, if you could step back, which is really hard for me, because I think you can win these games. Obviously, we're still a little bit away. And say we took the number four team in the country into a serious game of the fourth quarter, are things getting better? Yeah, they actually are getting better. And I maybe not man for man, but there were enough Terps out there that belonged on that field, and that's a major change from where we were. So now you get Illinois, who is having a bad year. Last Thursday, they go to Nebraska. They lose. They thought, Illinois thought they're on the way up with Brett Bielsma as the coach. They're having a down year, and here we go again which is Maryland. You can't blame Maryland for their schedule. They scheduled Virginia to be a rivalry game. No, they didn't no, know Virginia good. was going to be bad. Michigan State? I mean, I, I, Indiana? I mean, Who knew? we're the bad teams. There's no bad teams. They just, things fell their way, just like they're falling our way this week. But it's funny yep. to hear Coach Loxley talk about Illinois. You would have thought that they're number two in the country. All right. Well, they've they've had some bad moments. I don't think they're a bad team, and they're not winning the games. And, well, and wait, on the road, there. on the road, they lost by eleven to Kansas, by twenty five to Purdue, and uh, uh, what else did they do? That's well, all the Nebraska on the road. Nebraska was an awful game for them. Yeah, it was. Nebraska's not a great team. No, you know. So you got you got one thing that I'm not so sure how this is going to plan out. It's homecoming in College Park. The weather is supposed to be very iffy. So you have a 14 year 14 point favorite. It's supposed to rain most of the day, especially later. And we have a 3:30 start. I like the 3:30 starts, but I'm not a big fan of the weather. We'll see how Maryland plays in adverse conditions. On what you'd probably say ends up being a smaller than expected crowd for this one. Tell me about this Isaiah Williams, 38 catches, 503 yards. That's pretty good numbers, Wayne. That's about 13, 14 yards a catch. Yeah, but they'd also, if you're a critic of the team, you're going to say they have one guy to throw the ball to. They, they just didn't develop a full team. They had some transfers last year that really ramped them up. Most of those are gone now. So there's some holes there. But he plays a tough brand of football. The Brett Bealsma team, they might not win that game, but they play football the way you're supposed to. Uh, I've always admired the teams that he's had. It's just a down year for him. He's got to find some more offense to need a better quarterback. What's the story with bad weather in Maryland? Does it follow us around? It, it does seem to. There's been a game, whether home or away. And I know a few years ago, it might have been 10 years ago, it seemed like it rained every home game back in the ACC years. Not so much lately, but certainly on the road, we've had some atrocious weather. So just a little bit of rain on Saturday. If you were coming out, come on out. It's it's still a pretty good show. I like what Maryland's done fan-wise. I think the game experience is much improved this year. Uh, about, and if you haven't seen the new lights, you got to take a look at those. Luke Atmeyer, he's got some interesting stats. That's a quarterback for uh, Illinois. He's got 1,365 yards, Wayne. That's not bad. 
And uh, but they don't score, Bruce. Six TDs and eight interceptions. But they don't score. I mean, in the end of this, people are sitting back and waiting on them. They can dink their way down the field, but they can't. They can't close the drives out. Too many turnovers. Too many bad plays when it mattered, and you start losing games that just snowballed on them. So the season's halfway through, and Roman Hemby only has 344 yards. Something's yeah. wrong with that guy. Yeah, what is – well, you know, Lamont Jordan, your new good buddy, mm -hmm. okay, has said that if you don't give running backs holes once in a while, they're just not going to be able to get, get the yardage. And it just hey. doesn't look like – the only guy who ever runs into an open area is Talia, all right? But he can see that ahead of him. But uh, I tell you what, I, I'm not I'm not buying what my buddy Lamont's selling. Littleton's looked pretty good. Colby McDonald's looked really good. Roman Henby's looked very pedestrian. I think there's something wrong with him, and I think there's something wrong with Corey Deitches at the tight end spot. He, he he's limped out of that game too many times. Well, he was hurt going into it, if I remember correctly. He still had five catches away for 41 yards. That's really not bad for a tight end. Look, here's the bottom line. They had the team where they wanted them, and they could not close the deal. But they're five and one. What would it mean to be six and one and beat Illinois with a week off before you go to talking about a weak team, Northwestern? All right. Now Northwestern did pull an upset uh, two weeks ago, but Maryland should easily be able to handle them. Well, right? I'm not going to take easy anymore as it get the weather gets worse and you're going to chicago and you don't know what you're going to face i'll give up on easy i'll give up on the excuses at this point just win the games yeah you want to be seven and one and you want to come home from the next meaningful game so you've got your you're set up with penn state at nebraska and michigan or do i have those backwards uh, i think that's your run and then you close with rutgers well, you definitely close at Rutgers and, uh, well, whatever. I can't find my book with the schedule. Here it is. Uh, the, you, you have Northwestern, and after Northwestern, uh, you're off a week. You come back home to Penn State. Right. And then do you have another week off, or do you go to Rutgers? At Nebraska. At Nebraska. Michigan. Right, and Michigan, and then at the Rutgers. So, so you have you've three got games on the road. Three games on the road against Northwestern, Nebraska, and Rutgers. Can they win all three of them? They could, but you've got to figure somewhere along the line in those three games. They're going to go sure, south. Sure, but let, let's talk about the other side of that coin. Leah has not gotten it done in, in the big – you got two chances to do that, and then it's the end of your career. I still expect, and I was hoping that it was Ohio State, that one of these last two games – He's going to come out and get it done. You got two home games. If you want to go to Hero, it's there to be done. If you could win those games, boy, does it change your perspective on the season. Even if you just win one of them. One of them. You don't have to win both. You win one of them. And even if you lose one of those three and you wind up 9-3 and three with a win over a top-10 team, that's a hell of a season. It really right. is. But you're uh, talking about one season ending with the Orioles. I'm dressed up tonight for my I saw my Stanley Cup t-shirt from a few years ago. The Caps get started with the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's a good first game for Washington. We'll talk hockey in a couple of weeks. We'll just keep this focused on Maryland football. But before we do more football, are you excited about basketball media day, which is Tuesday? Yes, I'm very excited. I, I love Coach Willard. I had a great talk with him uh, at the last game against Indiana and uh he is so pumped for the year, and he's so excited that the fans are going to love this team, and I agree with it. Look, take away the uh, the UCLA game last year, and could you have had a better home season? It was impossible. They won every game. And, and the Purdue game was right, a classic. The Purdue game with was With the great. freshman class that they have, because you do this show with a group of three Terps in the background on lacrosse field that sort of grew up together, went through – losing some tough games to winning the championship. And I'm not saying Maryland basketball is winning the championship, but with this freshman class, they got the guys that if they stay here, you might remember their name 20 years from now. And that, that's you're going to remember Deshaun Harris-Smith 
And this Jamie Kaiser Jr. is the one who surprised everybody. And uh, that's what that's what the coach is so excited about, that expectations were high on, on uh, Deshaun Harris-Smith, but not that high on Jamie Kaiser, but they should have been. And, you know, can, can, is there enough, are there enough balls on the court to satisfy these guys? That can be a problem, Wayne. You know it. Somebody has to play defense. I right. Mean, you got... Somebody's got to distribute, okay? Yeah. And somebody's got to realize, like, you know, a, a great team to look at is Villanova. In a period of four years, Villanova won two natties, right? Two national championships. And at the time, you know, you were really weren't raving about Jalen Brunson or the other key guys on the team. But guess what? They're all in the NBA and they're all starring. Why? Because they're all what? Winners. And that's what it comes down to. All right. And uh, if Zach Eady would have won the national title this year, he might be in the NBA this year. I don't know. But that that fact, you know, I watched, I know something you probably didn't even look at, was the USA in this World Cup basketball tournament. Wayne, they got out-rebounded so bad, it was laughable. And I'm sitting to myself, where's Hunter Dickinson? Where's Zach Eady? These guys rebound unbelievable, especially Zach Eady. Did he not average 17, 18 rebounds a game? In other words, and they don't want him on the team? Different style. I mean, th- this was a team that was supposed to go out and score 100. Uh, y- you come from the Big Ten where the first to 60 wins, and I actually think that's one of the things that holds Purdue back in the tournament is n- they don't score in bunches. They really don't. Uh, so when you got a guy that's that big and slow, some sometimes uh, that's one of the reasons he doesn't pe- play more minutes than he does. They're trying to keep both styles in that game. Well, Wayne, we got Juju, and we got some strength, and uh, I can't wait for basketball, but we're in the middle of football right now, and they're going pretty good. Unfortunately, soccer's not going that great right now, and uh, uh, field hockey's been doing pretty da- pretty good. Ten and three, we look at it like it's a bad season, but you and I both know that's not a bad record, all right? But uh, football's been doing great in my eyes, being five and one, being bowl eligible on October 14th if they win. Maybe getting to at least eight wins, another improvement year, and uh, nothing but ups for uh, Mike Loxley and the football team. And Mike Loxley is one confident guy. Wayne, give me a final score before we end the segment. Uh, Terps have Illinois for homecoming. I think they, they do well. Uh, 30, 34-17, Maryland. I'm thinking Illinois. the same thing. I'm not sure Illinois will get that high, but uh, – you know, let's not fall behind and have to sweat that out again. I tell you, it's uh, it it it's bothersome. Wayne, I'll see you in a few hours out of College Park. See you then, and we'll catch you for the post game on Turk Park. Oh, all right, my friend. Take care. Back in a few minutes here on Science and Kirk presents the Sports Maven.